guys, we don't like to put them in too with my apples, just like this. And there's no exact. It's the the fruit is starting to ferment with the sugar. Hey Keys Mods fans, this is David Fine, and I have before me here five apples, two bananas, a little bit of sugar, and a little bit of water. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to attract butterflies and moths and beetles and all kinds of other stuff. Just using bananas, apples, and sugar and water. Guys, check this out. Um, I've been using this formula for, oh my gosh, 25 years, maybe 30. And I got it from my buddy, Leroy Kane, who's a, who's a great insect, um, more, more of a moth expert, but he's been trapping moths for over 50 years. So uh, guys, check this video out. It's super simple, super simple formula. We're just gonna cut these up and we're gonna put them in a trap and we're gonna show you how to attract butterflies and moths and beetles and other stuff. Guys, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and we will show you all kinds of fun, cool stuff about the butterflies and moths of South Florida. Check this out. Looks yummy, right? I eat it. Let's see if, let's see if moths will. turn brown. I have some other bait that's a little newer. Okay guys, for the bananas uh, and the apples, kind of one of the things about how to cut them, guys, we don't like to put them in too small of pieces. Some people blend stuff and wipe it on trees. But if you're going to hang a trap for multiple days, you don't want your pieces too small. And reason being is because if your chunks are larger, the fruit on the inside won't spoil as quick. Like the stuff on the outside, once we put it in the water and the sugar, the stuff on the outside will spoil, spoil quicker. And the, the, the chunks are big enough where the stuff on the inside will last a little longer. And what that does is it adds longevity to your bait. So basically your banana guys, I'm just, well, this one's kind of a little overripe, but that, that's all I'm doing guys. I'm just taking pieces of banana like this, two bananas and putting it in a Ziploc bag. Very, very simple. There's two bananas right there. Putting it in a Ziploc bag. Now it's time for apples. I'm gonna do five apples and two bananas. And let's see how we'll do an apple. So basically, same thing with the apple. Oops, I'm trying to do this. Film with one hand and cut with another. Probably not recommended. But, um, you know, with the apples, guys, same thing. You don't want, you know, your, your chunks of apple to be too small because you want the bait to last. You want your mixture to last. It'll last five, six days. Um, your problem is, especially in the drier months, like May tends to be a drier month in Florida. And, you know, you need to keep adding water to it. So as long as you keep water in your bait, it will last longer. And guys, this is all I'm doing with my apples, just like this. And there's no exact science to it. So it's not like you need to be super specific with how big but guys that's it i'm gonna do the same thing with all five of these apples i'm gonna put it in a ziploc bag i'm gonna add some sugar and water um check this out all right next step i have all five of my apples two bananas cut up put in the gallon ziploc bag next step is i've got about a half a cup of sugar and i'm just gonna dump the sugar in okay very simple and then I've got a half a cup of water and it's again, it's a rough thing. It's not an exact formula, but half a cup of sugar, half a cup of water. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna seal up your Ziploc bag 
leave a little bit of room. Don't squish all the air out quite yet. And you leave a little, little bit of room. And what you're gonna wanna do now is you're gonna wanna dissolve the sugar with the water. So you're just gonna kinda slosh this around. Dissolve the sugar, let it settle. Okay. Now, last step is you want to, now you want to take all the air out of your bag. Let's see if I can get this going here. You take all the air out of your bag, your Ziploc bag, and you seal it. So now it's, look how it's, there's no air in that bag, right? The last step, guys, is putting it in the sun for a couple days before your baiting expedition. You're gonna wanna put it outside in the heat and the warmth, and what's gonna happen is the sugar in here and the water are going to create an alcohol and some gases that are gonna expand this bag, and you'll know when this bag of fruit is ready to put out once it blows up with gas. So. Here's the next step, guys, is putting it out and waiting for this thing to fill up with gas so that it, we know that it's ready to use. Okay, so next step in the fermentation process is we take our Ziploc bag, our gallon Ziploc bag with our apples, bananas, sugar, and water. No alcohol yet, no ethanol. It's not, it's not making any gas yet, right? So all the air is pressed out. We've got our Ziploc bag sealed and now the trick is we gotta get this thing to ferment, okay? And the sugar will help it, the water will help it, and this fruit will start to produce some gas. And when this bag fills up with, with gas, like a balloon, we will know that it is ready for attracting some butterflies and moths. So, so guys, uh, the best way to do this and get this fermentation thing going is to put it out in the sun. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this outside for about a day or two. And in, in a day or two, this thing will blow up like a balloon. Um, now, the problem is if you put fruit out for outside, you're going to get pests like rats and mice and opossums and raccoons and God knows what else. Down here in South Florida, we'll have iguanas and all kinds of stuff attracted to the fruit. So in order to keep the pests from eating it, and destroying your bait. I put it in a five gallon bucket like this with a lid. This is actually one of my live bait buckets. And inform your wife or your spouse what this is so that she, <laughs> they don't get upset. But guys, what this will do is this lid will keep most pests from bothering your bait, but then you're gonna wanna leave it in the sun. And I'm just gonna leave it right there for a day or two and when i do that we'll open this thing up in a couple days and we will see if that bag is blown up and ready to use for bait so uh look at this probably some butterflies in the backyard we've got statira sulfurs i figure i'll take a little detour there's some statiras over here on the coin vine Aren't they cool? Let's see. Where are they? I see them. All right, there they are. Now well, we've got zebra and two statiras, and they're doing their thing. All right, guys, we'll hang out and wait for the fruit to ferment. All right, when you're hanging bait traps, guys, this is what you want to see. I put this together, this bait, about it's about three and a half days ago it's probably a little long it's starting to turn brown i have some other bait that's a little newer they haven't quite filled up with gas quite yet but you can see how this bag is filled with gas and you know when it's filled with gas like that that this stuff is fermenting and it's really really good and guys this is exactly what the butterflies are going to want to see so yeah, when, when this when this bag is filled up with gas like this, guys, that is exactly what you want to see. That's how you know your bait is ready. 
it's it's producing the gas it's producing the alcohol it's the the fruit is starting to ferment with the sugar and the water and it's literally the the perfect situation for hanging so guys this is our bait and we're going to hang it right now
Okay, folks, that's it. That's how you set up fruit bait in a trap to catch harvest butterflies and moths and beetles. And we're going to find out what kind of stuff comes into these traps. I'm going to hang four of them. Uh, I hope you liked the video. Um, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Um, guys, we're having fun. And I'm going to show you some life cycle stuff from the butterflies and moths that we get from these traps. And so this is a great way to survey. It doesn't harm the insects. And we can release everything that we see unharmed. And guys, we're enjoying ourselves. So uh, if you like the video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And uh, it really helps out. Comment down below what you learned. Comment down below what you'd like for me to show you about bait trapping or about how to do whatever. Maybe we try a different type of bait. If you've had success with a certain kind of bait, let me know. I'll, I'm, I'll try anything, you know, that's legal and moral. <laughs> so, um, guys, check that out. Hope you liked the video. Don't forget to check out our website, which is uh, keysmoths, um, keysmoths.com. That's www.keysmoths.com. We've got, gosh, um, almost 600 species of moths from the Florida Keys and 100 species of butterflies that we found just from the Florida Keys. And guys, we're doing all kinds of stuff all over Florida and elsewhere. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, I've got more videos to come on other things that we're doing with the insects that we find in these traps. So uh, make sure you hit that notification bell. Guys, take care and enjoy South Florida. Bye now.